So in this problem, it says a car is driven 225 kilometers west and then 98 kilometers southwest at a 45 degree angle. First, just for those of you who don't remember this stuff, this is what west, northwest, etc. looks like. North goes up, east goes to the right, south, west. All right, so just so we got that down. Um, so in this case, the car is first going 225 kilometers west, and it's then going 98 kilometers southwest. And I'm going to try to draw that a little smaller because 95 is about, or 98 is about half 225. Okay. You notice there's a very specific way that I drew these, where I drew first this arrow, all right, the one 225, and then I drew this arrow second. Um, and you see in this case, we've actually lined these up what's called tip to tail, where I've actually, where, where instead of these two ends being together, I put the arrow end of one up against the, the non-arrow end of the other. And that's how we're always going to uh, depict two things being added together. Um, and in this case, I just want to remind you that this is, again, 45 degrees southwest, um, as it said in the problem. Okay? Now, the resulting vector, um, which is the, the total displacement of the car, is just this arrow right here. Okay? And so I'm going to call that my total displacement, capital D. All right? And we'll call these, these displacements little d1, or the first distance traveled, and little d2, or the second distance traveled. Okay? And what we're trying to find is this d, and they also want both the magnitude, so the size of this thing, and the direction that it's going. So we're going to indicate the direction by um, basically the angle below uh, west that this actually is going in. So <clears throat> the first thing we need to do is actually set up a coordinate system. You see that this is kind of all floating in, in nowhereville. Um, I'm going to just do, again, standard type of coordinates where we actually call that our x and that our y. In this case, east is positive x, west is negative x, y is north, negative y is south. Okay. Um, and now we can go ahead and solve this. You may have, in other classes, something that you've done in the past, may have done things with what's called the law of cosines, different ways of basically adding these together using vectors, stuff like that. We're not going to do that. In all of our problems, we're always going to try to break things down into what are called components. So any vector can basically be broken up into different parts uh, that basically indicate uh, how those different parts line up with x and y. Um, in the case of D1, D1 is very straightforward. It only has motion in the X direction. There's no Y component in it. And so this D1 is actually all X. So this is, this is actually equivalent to D1X. Um, and D1Y, just as a, as a side note, is just going to be is equal to zero because there's no Y component in that vector. This one is a lot more difficult. It actually has a little bit of y component, all right, because it goes kind of down to the left, and it also has a, 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 uh, and it also has a, an x component because that's the left part. The down part is the y component. So what we want to do is break this up so it actually lines up, with, so we only have x and y components visible. So I'm going to go ahead and take this, and let's zoom in on it down here, where this is just that that d2, all right. So this is d2, which again is just 98 kilometers. And again, let's keep reminding ourselves that this is 45 degrees. Okay? And what we're, again, what we're going to try to do is break this up into components where we're going to break it up into d2x and d2y. That's what we want to do, where of course this is a right angle. What we can do is if we break it up in these d2x and d2y's, it turns out when you have components that are all along the same way, they just add together. So in other words, once we figure out d2x, we can just directly add it to d1x to get our total displacement in the x direction. Okay. Question is, of course, well, how do we find d2x and d2y? This is where our old trigonometry uh, comes in handy. 
if you remember Soka Toa. All right, so uh, the sine of something is equal to opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine of something is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And the tangent of something is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. All right, so katoa. All right, great. So um, if we want to, for instance, know what d2x is, all right, we can take the sine or, or the, the, the cosine, mm -hmm. the cosine of 45 degrees, there's our 45 degree angle, the cosine of 45 degrees is the adjacent d2x over the hypotenuse, which in this case the hypotenuse is opposite our right angle, that's just d2. Okay, the other way we can think about this is that d2x is equal to d2 cosine of 45 degrees. And now we can actually find that because we know that d2 is 98, we can type cosine of 45 into our calculator and we get that d2x is equal to 67.2 kilometers. Using a similar trick and using the sine to get this one, we can find that d2y is actually the same thing. It's, in this case, it's d2 sine of 45 degrees. Turns out sine and cosine of 45 degrees are the same, and we just get 67.2 kilometers for that one as well. Now, to get the total vector, again, what we're trying to do is find what d is. Um, we can draw in two ways. Basically, it's, it's this d1, which again is all in x, so it's 225 kilometers. Then it's this d2x, all right, which in this case is now um, 67.2 kilometers. Again, this is d1. If we add those two together, the x component is just two, uh, is just uh, so d2x plus d1 is equal to 292 kilometers. Now we just need the y component of it. Again, d2y is equal to 67.2 kilometers, meaning that this total d, all right, we have a right angle again, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. So d squared is just equal to, uh, 292 kilometers squared plus 67.2 kilometers squared. Take the square root of both sides and we get the D, the size of D is 300 kilometers. Now we wanna find this angle. Again, we can use any of ours now because we have everything solved. Um, in this case, I'll just use sine. We just find that theta is equal to the inverse sine of 67.2 kilometers over 300 kilometers, our kilometers cancel, and we just get the inverse sine is 12.9 degrees. Again, this all makes sense. 300 kilometers is bigger than any of our sides, 225 or 98, um, but it's not any bigger than both of them added together, which would be how big it would be if they were both in line with each other. So the 300 kilometers makes sense, and the 12.9 makes sense. It's less than 45 degrees, but again, more than zero. I hope that helps, and uh, good luck with that, and we'll see you in, in next class.